and welcome to the latest episode of the Baggies Broadcast Fan Chat Show, the place that gives you, the Albion fans, the chance to have your say on your team. And tonight, as always, I am delighted to be joined by three massive Baggies fans who are going to be giving their views on three topics from the Baggies bag. We've got Sonil Patel and Lizzie Hayward, who've been with us before, and we've got Jason Wheeler, who was a first-time guest on the show. You may recognise him from his passionate Albion videos on social media, which have uh, predominantly been positive ones at the moment, Jason. So uh, hopefully keep them ones up going forward. Hopefully the run carries on. Absolutely. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Well, first off, guys, we're going to talk... Well, we've got three topics, as always, that come up. And we're going to talk about the returning players, because I know everyone, well, I know I am, and I know everyone else is excited by some of the big players that we've got coming back this weekend against Ipswich. Josh Madger um, and John Swift are going to be in the squad. They could even be in the eleven for the big clash with Ipswich on Saturday. Lizzie, I'm going to come to you first. Um, who is the biggest plus coming back? Now, we know that John Swift has had a fantastic season until his injury, but equally, I'll be about to play most of the season with one centre forward. So Josh Magic coming back is going to be going to be a, a big lift. Who is the biggest positive for you out of the two coming back in this weekend? I still think it's Swift being the big important one, um, just because he's our top goal scorer and um, that creativity he brings to the team, his set pieces and things like that. But equally so, Josh Madger, we've we've needed somebody up front really who can just bang the goals in. He hasn't really shown much at the moment, just coming off the bench, but hopefully we can see what he's made of now he's coming back. Yeah, Jason, with Josh Madger, you know, he is someone... We saw a couple of games, I think it was obviously at Bristol when he got the injury, I thought he played really well. And we all know Albion want to get in the top six, we all want to get promoted this season. You know, That's become a bit of an ambition now, given the, the run that, that Corbrand's men have been on. Could someone like Madge be key to that, given the fact that we have had to play all this season without a striker so far and we've done so well? You know, Him coming back in and then DK. Could players like that, could they be, the, you know, we talk about other players, Phillips, Dean Garner, et cetera, midfielders. Could someone like Madge who hasn't done a lot already, but could he be a big key in that top six hunt? Well, I think with, I think with Josh Madger, we're somewhat in the unknown, aren't we? Because we've only seen glimpses and flashes, but certainly uh, full slot, it was at Bristol City that day, and we've seen his performance. Um, there's certainly an hell of a lot to like, and uh, certainly uh, one to be excited, sorry, excited by that day, just our look of course. So uh, right at the death, he gets uh, taken out, which was a stonewall penalty for me on the day, but uh Absolutely. I mean, they say the strength of any team is uh, not what's in your first, first 11 necessarily, but what's on your bench. And I think that is applicable. Options are important, as Carlos has alluded to many times, that, um, you know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, for a cliche, but uh, that's true. And uh, certainly the return of Swift and Josh Madger obviously uh, gives us uh, more options on the bench, what we haven't had in previous games, as well as we've done. Do you think he, you know, Carlos Corbran kept his, his cards very close to his chest today, but do you think he could potentially come back in and, and start on Saturday? I'd be amazed if Swift or Josh Madger started on Saturday, to be perfectly honest. One, they've both been out a number of weeks. Training is not like playing. And, of course, the team's been doing well. So, again, well, we hate to keep doing cliches, but if it ain't broke, why fix it? And... Uh, I certainly think the players who have been in the start 11 at the minute, I know obviously Carlos has changed it and mixed it, and I'm sure he will Saturday. Uh, he'll obviously have a look at Ipswich and tactically he'll decide how to go, but uh, I'd be surprised if either of them started on Saturday. So I'm going to come to you. I'm not going to talk about any one of them. I'm going to talk about another player who's going to be coming back very soon that we all seem to have forgotten about and someone who Carlos Corbran has actually got a lot of admiration for, and that's Adam Reach. He, he said today Adam Reach is he's back in training next week. He, he's not far off a return. Um, do you think he could have a a bit of a part to play between now and the end of the season? He was used a lot by Corbran in the back end of last season. And, you know, we haven't seen him. He got injured in pre-season and he's sort of been one that we've forgotten about. But could he play a big part? Um, I think he's a bit of a part to play. I think at the moment, I presume he'd probably maybe playing on the left hand, left hand side, left wing back, left, left full back. Um, at the moment, we, uh, Corbran's not quite settled on, on who's playing left back. Uh, Peters was there, wasn't he, for a long time as the back three. Um, Townsend's come back in the last couple of games, played okay, arguably, potentially at fault for the, for the goal against um, Southampton. 
Um, so yeah, I think he could have a part to play because I don't think anyone has particularly nailed the left hand side down. I think Phillips played there for a bit as well, didn't he? Early part of the season. Um, yeah, I'm just hoping that like with other players, he was a player which a lot of us has probably looked for and thought, has he not really played that well for us? But uh, Corbrand does seem to have a habit of getting the absolute maximum out of players. So I'm hoping that when he comes back, that yeah, he'll be able to um, offer us something different to what we already haven't got. Good stuff. I want to just go on to talk about someone who's not actually at Albion at the moment, who's out on loan, Carlin Grant at Cardiff. Um, and we've seen a few um, little snippets in the last couple of weeks. Carlin Grant was speaking to the press down in Cardiff and said he'd had no contact from from Albion. Equally, Carlos Corbrand spoke about a week or so ago, saying that he he, he won't close the door on, on Carlin Grant. Lizzie, I'm going to come back to you. Does, you know, Carlin Grant's got two and a half years left on his on his contract. Do you see a potential future for Carlin Grant at West Brom? past next summer? Um, personally, I don't, just because I don't think he's got the greatest attitude. Um, he's just, he seems a bit like the black sheep of the squad, really. Um, Corbrand's tried him, doesn't seem to play him too much. Um, and it just says a lot that he has gone out on loan. It seems to be just one of those signings that didn't pay off. And we paid a lot for him at the time. Um, and yeah, he did score a lot of goals for us um, in that season that we turned down from the Premier League during COVID. Um, so we thought it was quite promising, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem like he's in favour at the moment, considering all the options that we're missing at the moment up front. Yeah, Jason, it's an interesting point Lizzie makes. And I've got, I've got it written down. He scored 18 goals in that season, you know, the first season back. Um, I think it was the, the Val slash Bruce um, season. Do you think he gets maybe a, a lot of a rough ride from Albion fans? Now, we've all seen some of his performances and, 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 and you know, there's a reason why he he left on, on loan in the summer. He didn't play an awful lot of football under Corbram, but, you know, from someone looking from afar, seeing someone who scored 18 goals in one season, what, they would probably think that, why have West Brom let him go in the summer? But do you think he gets a bit of a rough ride from certain sections of the fans or do, or do you think it's right? I certainly think uh, from people on the outside looking in and looking at the bare facts of the 18 goals would think that. I think if you watched West Brom week in and week out, you'd have a very different opinion. Uh, I'm certainly no fan of Carlin Grant. Uh, and I also think, uh, you know, the days of a striker just being able to score a goal and that's it, have pretty much gone really. A striker has to offer so much more today. And if you look at what Carlos expects off his centre forward, Carl and Grant's never going to fit that bill. Never in a million years. Um, so, no, not for me at all. Um, I'm certainly, as I just said, no fan at all. Daniel, it's both interesting points that are made there. Given Albion striking you know, issues injury-wise, we all know hindsight is a wonderful thing. If Carl and Grant was still at Albion and not at Cardiff, would he have been you know, an asset in this period that we've we've just gone through? I know Madge is coming back now and... You know, we're really hopeful that Daryl DK will be the the late Christmas present. You know, two years on from arriving at the club, but in hindsight, would he have benefited Albion to keep him around? And I know that finances probably played a part in it, and we're probably speaking in more of you know a, an ideal world to him. But what, what's your opinion on it? I totally agree with what, what uh, Lizzie and Jason have said on that. Really, I've I've never been his, his biggest fan. I think he he makes a good sort of highlight reel on YouTube. Like if you just saw his goals, you'd probably think, oh, what a great player. But as Jason says, if you're watching watch us every week, his performances over the piece, I just don't think he really fits into into the, the core brown way. I think his core brown's maybe being a bit diplomatic. Um, he's he's a good character like that. So I don't. I, He'd probably be a squad player good off the bench, but I think we've shown even without him and with literally, you know, BTA on his own or, or some weeks playing no strikers um, that we can play better as a unit without him. So I think he would he would struggle. I think, you know, with his work ethic, I, th I don't think he'd be anywhere near the starting 11, to be honest with you, even if he was still here. Yeah, I'm going to move the conversation on to someone here's at Albion and he's doing very well at the moment. Now, Tom Fellows is has broken into the Albion first team this season. A lot of youngsters have gone out on loan. Um, young fellows went out on loan last season and he seems to have impressed. He's come off the bench a number of times now, pushing for a start. Um, he's had high praise this week, a big feature in the Express and Star from that a lot of his former managers have tipped him to go right to the very top. Sunil, I'm going to stick with you. We see, Now, we've seen a lot of, of young players come through um, and maybe do 
okay to start with and, and, and it hasn't quite worked out. You know, you look at the likes of Sam Field who ended up going to Queen's Park Rangers with Keem Harper, um, who's sort of fallen down the leagues a little bit and, and players like that. Do you, have you seen enough to, do you think Tom Fellows can succeed at Albion, given the chance? That's a tough question, isn't it? Um, I'm going to just say potentially sit on the fence a little bit. I, I he has played well from what I've seen. I think, I can't remember the home game. He came on um, maybe Sheffield Wednesday, potentially. He had, he had a good cameo when I went to the Southampton game. He was bright. Um, I think he sort of physically looks a bit better than he was when he first broke into the team a couple of years ago. Um, I think the difficulty is he's not going to start with the plays that we've got out wide, because we've got so many at the moment. Um, whether we look to move him out on loan in January, I don't know. Um, but he has got that something about him. He's definitely got something, I think, which we could definitely um, hopefully see come to fruition if he does stay with us. Yeah. Lizzie, do you think it's a, a case of maybe patience? I know, you know, we know as football fans these days, we want to want to see everything straight away and, and we want someone comes in and we want him to perform straight away. But given his age, is it just Albion fans need to maybe have a bit of patience with him because he's got, like Sonal said, he's got that, that X factor in him at the moment? Yeah, you've always got to be patient with the young players, I think. Otherwise, you're just putting them on, on a pedestal like we did with Berahino and people like that. And you just don't want to rush them in. Um, the, when we have seen him playing, he's just he's, he's looked so bright on the ball. And I made a comment to somebody by me the other week saying that his crossing was nearly 100%. Um, he was always getting the right man. And he was like Chris Brunt-esque. But, um, yeah, you don't, you don't want to rush them in. Otherwise, um, yeah, we'll be hoping for a bit too much from him. That's high praise. The last show we had, he was compared to Jason Kumas and we've had him compared to Chris Brunt now. So we're expecting, expecting big things from him. Um, Jason, Sonny mentioned there, we've got a lot of options out wide and and, and the likes of Jeremy Sarmiento at the moment is he's still pushing for a start. I know he had a bit of a setback with his injury. His fellows on par with, you know, with... with Sarmiento, some Albion fans might, you know, might scoff at that given that we know the the, the technical ability that Sarmiento has. But Fellows has been having a lot of chances off the bench recently. Do, 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 can you see him getting his his chance maybe alongside Sarmiento or even before Sarmiento? It's certainly going to be interesting to see uh, how much, uh, or certainly when the need arises, if Carlos does turn to Tom Fellows, uh, over some of the other names you mentioned. Obviously, you know, in the Championship, there are a lot of games, three games a week, injuries and suspensions will kick in. But I thought Lizzie hit on a very good point there. Uh, there's an old saying, speed kills, but Tom Fellows is so much more than speed. What I do like with Tom Fellows, when he does get to the byline or he does put a, a cross in, inadvertently uh, picks his man out or certainly gets his head up to pick his man out. You see so many players today, you know, good to the byline or or they're rapid, but they run with the head down. What I like with Tom, he does get his head up and he tries to pick someone out. I mean, you've seen against QPR. Was it QPR? Yeah, it was at home. Um, on two occasions, he picked his man out. Uh, you know, his, his delivery is fantastic. And uh, yeah, I mean, given the options, will he benefit from a loan in January if he's going to get a, a very much of a big part, which you'd expect he would? That's a good question. Certainly uh, one for Carlos, uh, I would think, to ponder. Um, but uh, as Sunil said, he's certainly got something about him. No question. Fantastic. That's fantastic, guys. But just before we wrap up the show, obviously, action is back on Saturday. The international break is over. And Albion, welcome. High-flying Ipswich come to the Hawthorns at the weekend. They're absolutely flying after a promotion from League One. I'm just going to go around you guys and get a little bit of a... So what prediction for the game? How do you think it's going to go? How tough it's going to be for Albion and, and a bit of a score um, score prediction. So, Sonny, I'll, I'll come to you. How, how do you see it playing out at the weekend? You know, Ipswich are coming, they're flying. They're the, for some, they're the surprise package, but they don't seem to be going away after their flying start to the season. How do you see the game panning out and, and what's your score prediction? It's going to be really exciting. I really do. I think it's going to be end-to-end. I think it's going to be plenty of goals. Um, Ipswich have shown no fear. I, th- I think they're average. I th- I'm not sure. I think in all their games this season, it's sort of two to three goals. They concede a few. They're, they're not, you know, they're not winning 3-0, 4-0. They, they always seem to let the old uh, goal in. But having seen us play against uh, Hull and the Southampton game, um, I think we are quite well suited against teams who like to have a go at us um, rather than teams who come and park the bus. So I'm expecting, I'll probably get proved wrong now, probably be a dower nil nil. But uh, I think it'll be an open game. I think I think it'll be end-to-end. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to go 3 2 Albion. 3 2 Albion, I hope. Certainly hope it's that entertaining. Lizzie, how, how do you see it 
sort of playing out? You know, would you take a draw or, or what, what would your pr- score prediction be? I completely agree with Sonia. I think it's going to be such an open game. There's going to be quite a few goals. Um, yeah, it's which have been a bit of a surprise this season. I know a few people who saw them last year in League One said that they were going to do really well this year as well. But yeah, I think it's going to be uh, a goal fest. Um, but I do think it might be a draw. So I think I'll go 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Right, Jason, teed up for you now to say nil-nil. Now these guys have gone with the goals. What, uh, how do you see it playing out of the weekend? When I come on here, I knew I'd this question a couple, and I hate this. When we get to the match, I always offer my kids a five if they get the score prediction, and they always turn it and ask me, and I say, no, don't ask me, I'm a jinx. Um, <laughs> but pretty much with the guys, really, I've, I've seen him switch on the box a few times. Taylor made would be probably too strong of a line to put into it, but I certainly think, as the guys have said there, that Ipswich... Uh, will suit us to a certain degree because uh, they will be on the front foot. They will come and have a go. And if you do watch Ipswich, they do commit numbers forward. Certainly, if we can um, win our, the battle in midfield and on the turnovers, uh, what we are very good at uh, on the front, uh, when we can get in behind teams, um, yeah, I think we are in for a bit of a dingo. I think Sky have picked uh, a, a very good game here. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go 3-1 Albion. Why not? one Albion. Plenty of optimism and plenty of goals. Hopefully one of them results comes off. Guys, thank you very much for your time, as always, for coming on the show. Baggies fans, if you want to get involved in the next Baggies broadcast fan chat show, just drop me a direct message or a tweet on Twitter. It's Johnny Drury underscore star, um, and I'll get back to you, and you can be in with a chance of having your say on the Albion. Enjoy the weekend. Hopefully we get a big win over Ipswich. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, goodbye. <laughs>